For those of you who don't know, uh, I am a voiceover audio engineer, and people from all over the world send me their raw audio files, and I process them with uh, plugins, audio plugins, and uh, and I process their voice uh, to make it sound more professional, to help uh, if there's any kind of room problems with uh, reflections or resonance in the room, and I give them a better uh, a better sound, and it helps them to be competitive if they're doing voiceover uh, for commercials or audio books or video games or, I mean, you name it. There's so many different types of voiceovers uh, that people are doing and making money at these days. But I, I realize that I'm in a, a pretty odd, odd situation, and I believe it's, it's, it would be beneficial to share with you. Since I have so many people that send me uh, their voices on different equipment and different microphones, I, I definitely think that there's a value to sharing this with you, to hearing so many different types of voices on different microphones in different rooms, with different preamps or uh, interfaces. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through and um, I'm going to diagnose. I'll listen to um, the audio with you and we'll play the before, the raw audio, and then I'll play back the uh, uh, the processed audio and you, we can hear the difference. But the focus is going to be listening to the different equipment and then the processed versus unprocessed sounds. <laughs> I'm speaking to you today through an SE Electronics SE4400A. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone, and I'm going through a Focusrite uh, ISA-1 preamp. Uh, that's what you're hearing right now. And then I am uh, recording directly uh, through my Apollo X6 interface onto my DAW. So while I'm speaking to you today, this is the equipment that you're hearing on my voice. All right, let's continue, and we are going to start with a submission he wants to stay anonymous. That's totally cool. If you send me your uh, audio submissions, uh, we don't have to use your name. Now, the room he's recording in has one-inch foam on approximately 40% of the walls, 25% of the doors, and there's three doors. He's got bass traps uh, in the ceiling, and he has uh, one bass trap in, in the corner uh, of his room, just one bass trap. He feels that there's some boominess, and he wants to improve the presence of his voice while maintaining a deeper, mature voice. So let's look at uh, the equipment that he's using, and then we'll take a listen to the uh, before and after processed sound. He has an Earthworks Icon Pro microphone. Let's check that out. These look pretty cool. I have, uh, it's got some great reviews on Sweetwater. I have uh, worked with a lot of these microphones. I don't have one. I've never used one. Then he's recording into a very popular Focusrite uh, audio interface, the Scarlett 2i2. Uh, and then he's also using the very popular Adobe Audition uh, software to record on. I switched back to the microphone that he's using, and we can uh, look at that while we are listening to his unprocessed submission that he sent. And I'll diagnose what I hear, and then we'll listen to what I've done with the processing. Let's check it out. This is uh, his submission, Unprocessed. At Workplace Health USA, we give you, your staff, and customers peace of mind by providing intelligent hygiene solutions. As the world returns to normal and your business reopens, a safe and sanitized environment is top of mind for many people. I can hear a little bit of noise in the background, and that's understandable uh, when you've got, you know, computer fans and things. Um, but so we can minimize that and minimize it, not eliminate it with uh, an expander gate. Um, and I also hear that the mic is doing a pretty good job of picking up all the frequencies relatively e uh, evenly, but I do hear a little bit of a boominess, a low resonance, and that happens in any room, even if you have a, a well-treated room in, in my room, and I've got um, bass traps all over the place and, and sound treatment that we're gonna go, we'll go into one day. Um, so, I mean, I, I've, I've invested a lot in sound treatment, but there's still a boxy little sound. I still need to do a little bit of EQing in my voice. So um, it's just what happens, and it really depends on the room, the microphone, and the voice. So there's a little bit of um, balancing that we can do in the low mid frequency. So let's continue listening to the uh, unprocessed sound, and then I'll switch over to the process sound, which is after uh, the custom preset that I put together for him. Our EPA and FDA approved infection prevention solutions and planning help you go the extra step to provide a safe environment for employees, customers, and guests. At Workplace Health USA, we give you, your staff, and customers peace of mind by providing intelligent hygiene solutions. So you'll hear that uh, the, the clarity is definitely um, 
uh, more, it's just more presence, it's more clear. And by balancing those frequencies, what happens is that low boominess, it kind of takes over everything. So when you lower that certain frequency space that's overabundant, it's, uh, it's not that I'm uh, raising the high frequencies or that clarity as, as much as I'm balancing them out so you can hear them better. So I'm getting, uh, getting stuff out of the way and, and balancing out the frequencies. And, and the end result is uh, a more clear, um, balanced sound. And then when you add compression and gating and stuff on top of that, it sounds really good. So um, I like uh, what it sounded like and the result. Uh, so let's listen uh, again. We'll do just a quick unprocessed and switch back to the process and then we'll move on. So return to a safer normal with a clean environment from Workplace Health USA. As the world returns to normal and your business reopens, a safe and sanitized environment is top of mind for many people. Okay, let's switch over to another submission. This uh, person also wants to stay anonymous uh, and is in France, speaking French, uh, voiceover. Um, she says, I record in my bedroom. I, um, the only acoustic treatment that I have is a panel on the door just behind me. And uh, she's talking at the door's surface, so she's speaking into the sound treatment, which is a, a good idea to try to start with. Uh, she says, I'm no voiceover artist, just having fun with my voice at the moment. want to improve uh, the quality, but I'd like to have a better quality and not be worried about EQ and uh, everything else to make her voice sound better. I get that. You, as an artist, we all have that voice in our head that says, well, I'm not ready for prime time because it's it's my voice is to this or my voice is to that or I don't have the right voice or my equipment's not good enough. That is an insecurity that all creative people have. All artists have that little voice that just is the naysayer and it's horrible and you need to kill that voice. And I say, don't listen to it because I understand what that's like, but you just got to push through and do it anyway. Um, and, you know, uh, getting a voice processed and in increasing or improving the sound helps kind of push that voice back and you don't have to worry about it. Um, she is using an Audio-Technica AT2020. And, um, you know, if you look at the difference between the mic we just heard before, the submission and this one, I mean, this is a $99, $100 microphone. And... Um, I want you to com not compare or or uh, there's, it's not a shootout. This is more of like listen to the difference and uh, understand. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that you can get uh, professional quality out of most microphones. It just all, it really all depends on uh, the know-how and how well your room is treated, and just really the engineering has a lot to do with it. So uh, she's using an Audio Technica AT2020. Her audio interface is an Alesis IO2 Express, which apparently these aren't uh, available anymore. And then again, uh, recording into the Adobe Audition uh, digital audio workstation software. All right, now just as before, we're gonna take a listen to the unprocessed audio, and then we will um, switch back and forth to the processed sound. And uh, But first, let's kind of diagnose what's what's going on. And, you know, when I get the uh, submissions, the first thing I do is listen for, okay, first of all, is this processable? Uh, is it worth going through the effort and showing somebody what a processed sound is like? Because in some situations, it's, um, you know, there's just too much echo or too much room noise or whatever it is, or maybe equipment line noise or, or something happening that is just going to always prevent you from great getting a good sound. But sometimes, you know, you can process the audio and um, it'll sound better. There'll be an improvement, but I will share with you. And I've done this in most of the cases recently where it's like, hey, this is what the process sound is like. It's an improvement, but you can make this sound even better if you do some of these things to your mic technique or to your room treatment or whatever. So let's take a listen to the submission and, uh, and hear what it sounds like. Y a-t-il d'autres mondes au-delà du nôtre 300 ans avant Jésus-Christ, le philosophe grec Épicure écrivait déjà la chose suivante. Il y a un nombre infini de mondes semblables au nôtre et un nombre infini de mondes différents. Um. First of all, I could listen to her voice all day. What a great, what a great sound! And I think it's just the French is a great language. Um, but uh, it actually sounds pretty good. The recording um, is not so bad. But this is we hear some room noise. You can hear, and I believe that's just equipment noise. That may be the quality of the preamp. Uh, that may be a little bit of room noise. But the reflections from what I'm used to receiving is actually pretty good. So her speaking into that sound treatment in that uh, room at that particular length, height, and width is not 
uh, cre- and her voice. It's not creating uh, any kind of a, a boomy or boxy resonance in a specific frequency. So that's a big hurdle that we don't have to worry about. Um, but I will say that there is definitely some noise there and we could still do a little bit of balancing. So let's hear, uh, we'll listen to it again. I'll continue this clip and then let's listen to what I came up with with the processing. L'idée qu'il existe d'autres planètes en dehors de notre système solaire n'est donc pas nouvelle. Mais en l'absence de preuves, rien ne permettrait d'en avoir la certitude. Y a-t-il d'autres mondes au-delà du nôtre 300 ans avant Jésus-Christ, le philosophe grec Épicure écrivait déjà la chose suivante. One of the things I remember about uh, this submission is that she has uh, the the entire Fab Filter package, and I think we used the Pro Q3, the EQ, uh, the compression uh, plugin, Pro C2, I think it's called, and a couple iterations of each. We used the Gate and uh, the DSer as well. They're great plugins because uh, the Fab Filter is wonderful. They're a little pricey, but they give you such a great, they give me, when I'm using them anyway, such a, a great detailed control over every aspect. And when you listen to um, the audio, the processed audio that we uh, uh, we took a listen to here, I, I think the, the weakest link is the, the noise. And that could be because of the preamps and the interface. I know it's discontinued, so it's probably an older model. It could be definitely the difference between the $100 microphone and a more expensive microphone. Self-noise in uh, a more expensive microphone is going to be less. Let's listen one more time to the submission uh, before processing and then after processing. And you can listen for the gate expander that I'm using that's opening and closing to try to mitigate as much of that uh, room noise or signal noise as possible. It's still there. It opens up when she's speaking. You can hear the noise and then it closes again. But, you know, I can only do so much to try to make it as transparent as possible. I don't want you to hear the gate working, but at the same time, I want to minimize that background noise to give her the best sound possible with the equipment that she's using. So well, let's listen to it once again. This is the uh, starting with the unprocessed sound. Y a-t-il d'autres mondes au-delà du nôtre? 300 ans avant Jésus-Christ, le philosophe grec Épicure écrivait déjà la chose suivante. Il y a un nombre infini de mondes semblables aux nôtres et un nombre infini de mondes différents. L'idée qu'il existe d'autres planètes en dehors de notre système solaire n'est donc pas nouvelle. I think you can hear that evening out the frequencies a little further and there's not much EQ work that I did, but it still allows more clarity and the compression just makes it sound more present and, uh, and more clear and, and you can hear every little detail in her voice. Before we look at our last submission and kind of diagnose what it is, I want to tell you uh, about how you can send me your voice. Go to my website. It's LennyB.com. And if you've been hesitant, you know, I, I, just like I'm doing for these folks that we're reviewing here, um, you could stay anonymous and I'm going to just tell you, hey, this is what I hear. Here are the things that we can improve to make your voice sound better. Um, once you go to my website, it's pretty easy. Um, you'll see on the front page is a, a, a red button at the top. You click that button and that's going to take you to the submission page and Really, it's a good idea to, to, to prepare your audio file first because I need it a, a specific way. Um, you know, like at least 30 seconds unprocessed to make sure you don't have any uh, preamps or compressors or anything connected. Take them out of the chain. And there's just a few other things. I want some room tone. Uh, I've got copy uh, that, I, that I have available if you don't have any or um, you can read your own. And once you prepare your audio file, you'll come to a form where I get a little bit of information about your room, where you're from and how to uh, contact you. And then you will receive an email where you can drop your file and it comes directly to me. Also, I have uh, several free uh, courses on my website, Recording Basics. It goes over a little bit about room treatment and, and uh, some mic technique. Uh, I have a free EQ Techniques course. It's a, a three-day course. Uh, it's really quick, but it really opens your eyes to how amazing EQ can be and how transformative EQ can be to your sound. And then I also have a, a frequency guide, which kind of, it's a little roadmap to EQ and it shows you which frequencies uh, in the spectrum do what. So if you're, if you're looking to learn uh, EQ and how certain bands affect your uh, voice over when you're recording, um, this is kind of a roadmap to help you just understand how it all works a little bit better. Those are all free on the website. Again, LennyB.com. Okay, let's take a look at one more submission, and this one is from Gianluca Sordi. He is from Italy, and he's okay with me using his name and uh, telling you about him. He has four-inch four, uh, four inch rock wool panels on the ceiling walls, um, and then another three, uh, and he gives me the dimensions, 
on some of the other uh, space in the ceiling curtains, uh, window fitted with two inch rock wool. So he, he's got a lot of uh, room treatment that is really going to help. And you'll listen, you'll hear the difference. It's really going to help um, reduce those reflections in the, all different frequencies. If it's four inch rock wool, it's pretty thick. The thicker the rock wool, the thicker the sound treatment, the better it is at capturing lower frequencies. So I ask him here to describe his challenges and goals. He says how he does narration acting, dubbing, uh, and uh, the recording has been done at one and a half palm distance from the microphone, uh, slightly away from his mouth, which is actually exactly what I have. And he does that, and I do that, because the breath is going straight and the mic is still pointing uh, directly to my mouth. It's great mic technique. Uh, thank you very much for analyzing and forgive my bad English. Uh, Gianluca, you speak uh, much better English than I speak Italian, so you're, you're doing just fine. All right, he is using a uh, AKG C214 condenser microphone. Uh, I have this microphone as well. It tends to be a little on the bright side, but um, uh, very, very sensitive. I like the mic. So that's what you're going to be hearing. For an interface, he's using the Presonus Audio Box 1. I have uh, become more and more of a fan of Presonus. I have several pieces of equipment from them, and, and I continue to be more impressed. I think they've grown quite a bit as a company. And again, he is uh, using Adobe Audition, just popular all around the world uh, for voiceover and music production and everything. All right, here is Gianluca's audio. This is the unprocessed file with the AKG C214. Let's hear what it sounds like. Come lavorare con i risultati? Ora inizia la parte più importante del lavoro con Pulse Feedback, la valutazione e la discussione dei risultati nei team. I think you can hear how well uh, that sound treatment works. You know, what happens is um, when you have sound treatment like that and you've got panels in the rock wool, a thick rock wool, it just, the voice, it gets picked up by the microphone and anything else that hits the other walls is absorbed instead of bouncing back into the microphone. And that's where we hear uh, the echo and the reverb and that resonance depending upon the size of the room. Um, so it does a really good job. And it's, it's fun for me uh, as an engineer because when I have a nice, um, tight sound recording like this, a, a nice voice sound with no reflections. You can really dig into the EQ and sculpt and shape. And then the, the compression really, it just, it allows me to do my job better. Plugins do a great job at, um, they do an okay job at masking some of the problems. They do a great job at optimizing a good recording. So, um, you know, you can use plugins and compression and EQ as a band aid, or you can use it as a uh, magnifying glass, really, to just emphasize all the great parts of a voice. Um, all right, so let's listen to uh, the unprocessed again and then hear what uh, what I've done and uh, listen to the difference with the some of the reflections that we heard in, in uh, some of the previous files and hear the difference that the processing can make when you've got a good room. In questo meeting si individuano gli ostacoli nel lavoro quotidiano, si trovano soluzioni e si pianificano misure di miglioramento concrete. Ora inizia la parte più importante del lavoro con Pulse Feedback. La valutazione e la discussione dei risultati nei team. When I listen to a voice like that, it just draws you right in. I feel like his mouth is like right here. It's like an intimate kind of thing. And when you're storytelling uh, and when you're advertising or when you're uh, acting or whatever you're doing with your voice, that intimate connection is what grabs people and brings you into the story and makes you more influential. It makes you, uh, you can actually influence them to act to buy something to feel a certain way that's powerful so you know getting the right sound in and and optimizing the sound it, it just it allows you to have better tools to tell your story and to create emotion and connect and that's what i love about this whole thing so I'll bring you back to that little voice that's inside your head that we spoke about before. That is insecurity, and that is something that every artist has. And I'm, I'm telling you from experience, every time I turn this camera on, I feel like, oh, man, <laughs> it's not easy. I get it. But you have to push through and don't listen to that voice. And um, I'm happy to do this for you. Send me your voice. You go to the website, LennyB.com. And uh, if you've got questions, you can leave them in the comments here. I could do a diagnosis like this for you, tell you some of the weak points in your recording and how you can improve it. Don't criticize. I'm going to give you, uh, I'll, I'll tell you straight of what I'm hearing. And, um, you know, I can make some suggestions on equipment or say, hey, what you've got sounds awesome. 
you don't need to do a thing. That does happen every once in a while. We can talk about room treatment and stuff. So send me your voice. I'd love to hear from you. And let's make your voice sound better. Thanks for watching.